I don't know if I have any breath left. Inside each of us burns a constant fire. Sometimes it's quiet, but it's always there. It's fed by the anticipation of spring mornings and the distant ring of a long beard's gobble. All year, we wait. We wait for the spring and for that first gobble. That time is here. It's time to let it burn. Welcome to the fire. I think we're good after this. So. Yeah. There's a uh, field here up around here, about a quarter of a mile. Uh -huh. I think that's where the turkeys are going to be. Yeah, they're sure. going to get out of these fields, so especially yeah. these clean fields like this. Yeah, so yeah. trying to dry out. We'll give bit. it another second, and then we'll head on in. So yeah. you said it's back in that yeah, back that direction. Yeah, back around this curve. There's a creek and all back in. That's usually where they roost. Yeah, I hear some crows firing up, so the woods start to come yeah. alive. Birds start to sing too. Should be good here. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yes, sir. About to get after. Yeah. Oh, don't move. Don't move, I see another turkey. More gobblers. Tom, don't move, they're to the left. One, two, three, longbeards, and a hen. They're gonna run towards those jakes. Tom, when they chase those jakes off, let's get really aggressive. Brother Tom. I didn't, I didn't hey. Hey. It's always good you to know the dirt, man. Yeah, man. Hey, he's got some pretty good hooks now. I'd say he's probably a three or four year old turkey. Mm hmm I tell you what, for a morning that a lot of people would have slept in. I know, I know. Still early, we gotta go find you or somebody else for him. Maybe Neil can get one. That's right. Rain cleared up around 8 o'clock. Uh, we hopped out, went into some pines, and uh, heard a few turkeys and got set up right after the rain and uh, didn't have any luck, never really saw them. So we uh, changed it up, went to a new spot, uh, and immediately heard some more turkeys. Went and set up quick. Uh, they were out in the field, and we had a little intersection where we uh, had a chance to get a 
a good spot on them. They were already kind of moving our direction, and we had a, uh, a perfect little spot to, to hide and uh, jump down real quick, so it, uh, it was a quick hunt. There he is, there he is, there he is. Coming right at the edge of the field. I think he's by himself now. Look at the spurs. This thing is a stud. <sighs> yeah, right off the bat, right after the rain, we got two turkeys down. So we go back to the camp, kind of hang out there, talk about our hunts, drink some coffee, eat some breakfast. And, uh, you know, around lunch, a little after lunch, we, uh, so now it's time for Riley and I to, to hunt. But the thing about it is Riley and I are the only ones that can film, so we have to film each other. So. One of us has to film the other one, shoot one, and then vice versa. So we, uh, I think we played paper, rock, scissors. Uh, I beat Riley, and so I was up to bat first. Uh, we go out right after lunch, walk across this pine down, out this little road through this beautiful stand of uh, like mixed hardwood pine. And uh, he said, there's a, there's a big bottom down through here, and it comes up, and there's a big hay field on the other side. He said, they like to hang out in that hay field. So sure enough, I blow the crow call, two turkeys gobbled. There's two of them. How far do you think they are? Probably 175, 150. They can't be far. There's green right in there too, and that's a bottom, so. I mean, the first place we stopped, good gosh. Alright, let's see he's up here. breath left. I don't know. I can't breathe. So it's still day one and three turkeys have died already. Um, and it's my turn to kill one. And I'm pumped up because this never happens. Um, so Neil kills his and we immediately say, all right, where are we going next, Tom? And Tom takes us to another spot. Um, we go and check this field. He looks and it's kind of, we park and we look down over a ridge, we see turkeys strutting and we run back. Uh, circle around them, get in the woods and uh, uh, anyway, we get on that turkey and he smelled a bug. I don't, I don't really know what happened. He just kind of came to the edge of the field, skirted around the edge and walked 60, 70 yards through the woods away from us. Uh, might have had a chance to shoot him at one point, but just decided, you know, it's not worth it. Day two, we wake up, 
We pull up to this spot that Tom's kind of been saving. Uh, it's a beautiful spot. Where do you think we ought to get? Get rid of everybody's pine tree, not get over behind you. Like, where do you think they're gonna come from? They they sound like they're that way, but they come on that road and either come up this way or here. Right. So we should be good if we right. say it right. Alright, let's do it. straight in front of us. Where? Oh! Dude, what a, <laughs> hey, throw this on safety real quick before we do anything. Good night a while. Let me step on it real quick. Look at them hooks, man. I know. Yeah, and I, I was aiming at that corner right there. Dude, what about that? For me, I guess the fire was lit. Um, as a little kid, when you know, five or six years old, my papa was telling me stories about turkey hunting in Georgia. Um, so, you know, hearing those stories, and I guess that led into me skipping baseball practice one day and actually going turkey hunting, where I'd seen a turkey um, behind my house with my little single shot 20 gauge. Um, I had one turkey call shotgun about this big and killed a turkey so um, hunting in Georgia killing a turkey just you know my papa was my main influence for all that so hunting in Georgia killing a turkey where he was from was just kind of a special deal. When you can hear the drumming it sounds like it's you know two feet away and he gobbles and you can hear the just rattle in his chest and then the, you know, you're shaking so bad that you feel like you're just a completely about to come apart and you know the whole world's about to fall on you. I mean just uh, super intense uh, parts of turkey hunting like that uh, is really what makes me absolutely go crazy. Uh, it's 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 a fire like none other in, in hunting. Uh, there's nothing else in hunting that makes me feel like that uh, but when a turkey does those things it just absolutely makes me go crazy and that's that's the fire that keeps me coming back. Any turkey hunter knows what the fire means, uh, and if you've got a fire for turkey hunting, uh, at some point in your life, you know, you take somebody hunting for the first time when they're a kid or when they're a little bit older, but uh, if you're obsessed with turkey hunting from that first time you get introduced to it, that fire is always kind of burning. Uh, and then every year for the rest of your life, you know, you got turkey season and then you got waiting for turkey season, uh, like people say. So the fire is always burning 